When I was a kid in high school, I was introduced to Aldo Leopold by the librarian at our high school who handed me a Sand County Almanac. I read the Sand County Almanac and I loved the stories in the beginning about the geese flying over, about Good Oak, the different changes of the seasons and all. That was my favorite part of it when I was a kid. As time has gone by, the second part of it, where Leopold became more philosophical and talked about the land ethic. That's what began to speak to me as I became older. Leopold had the ability to put into words the feelings that I had as a kid and now later in life. The first part of, of Sand County Almanac is stories um, and tales of the season and, and being um, a part of that and uh, witnessing it. And the second half is more about his developing philosophy, the land ethic. And I guess I didn't realize at the time that he was speaking to me as a young man in the first part of the book and he was speaking to me as an older man, um, a maybe more philosophical person in, in the second half of the book. I'm Doug Duran. We're sitting at my family's farm in Westford Township, Richland County, near Cazenovia, Wisconsin, in southwest Wisconsin's Driftless area. This 400-acre parcel has been in my family for 120 years. It was originally purchased by my great-grandfather for its timber value. He had a sawmill about a mile down the road from here. They carved a farm out of it. To this day, there are still 240 acres of woods. But once the farm was carved out and the barn was built, it was like the Wisconsin license plate, the quintessential Wisconsin dairy farm. About 25 years ago, I started taking over the management of the farm, sharing that responsibility with my father and, and a couple of my siblings. And because I was the closest one, I became more and more involved with it. In 2001, we were doing a timber harvest and we were planning another one. And I was working with a, a DNR forester named Mike Finley. And um, some markings had been done up in the woods for what's called a shelterwood harvest. And it's a real intensive thing to try to regenerate red and white oak. We were cutting trees that were saplings when my great-grandparents bought this property. They were just big giant oaks, it was their time, right? So this forester talked to me about how in this particular area you really have a good, really good chance to regenerate those trees again. And I thought about that a little bit and we were up there marking and remarking and talking about it and as we walked out we paused up at the top of the hill and, and Mike said to me, you know, I, I have to say, I really admire that your family's willing to take this on. A lot of people kind of want to hold the woods right where it is. But if you want there to be red and white oak trees 120 years old, 100 years from now, it's time to start turning those over. It's a harvestable, sustainable crop. With good planting, they will be there again. But it's a lot of work and there's a commitment to it. But I really admire it that you are willing to do this. At that moment, I don't know if an epiphany is the right word, but I had this moment of clarity. It was almost as if my great grandparents and my grandparents and my parents and my siblings were standing there with me. And then my daughter and my nieces and nephews. And I said, well, we're trying to do the right thing. It's one of our goals and I guess it's not ours, it's just our turn. And Mike smiled at me and he said, you gotta write that down. And I did, and that has become really the theme of our management here. It's a, it's a mirror that we hold everything up against. If we're talking about some project here, does this fit with the future? The idea of it's not ours, it's just our turn is that we learn from and are honoring the past while we are planning and implementing 
our work in the present to do the best that we can for the future. It's a pretty simple concept, but that idea is really helping to guide us through everything that we're doing here. There is a lot of work to be done that isn't necessarily going to have a monetary return, but it is going to be a fulfilling kind of work. And it's the kind of work that's shared with other people, very fulfilling. And I learned a lot of that from my father, the shared experience of owning and working on a property, the shared experience of, of allowing other people onto it, and the shared experience of hunting. I look to Leopold for inspiration, for stories, for philosophy, and he provides all that. Leopold wrote in the middle part of his life that conservation in areas like the Midwest will ultimately come down to rewarding the private landowner for conserving the public's resources and through, at that time, the Soil Conservation Service, which is now the Natural Resource Conservation Service, and programs like EQIP and CRP and CSP, and all these government-supported, meaning public-supported programs that help me with conservation, that help landowners, that encourage, that incentivize private land conservation. And it's vitally important to, to conservation that we do encourage and incentivize landowners to do that. But that wasn't enough for Leopold. In between is this period of time where he really worked at conservation and private land conservation, which I have also done in the last 25 years of managing this property as a conservation property for my family. Planning, implementing, looking forward realizing that great work has been done before me and in this period of my life planning and working to set the place up for the future. One of the things that really has to happen when you own a piece of property like this is there's work that needs to be done. The land needs us to manage particular things and management takes time and money but it takes a lot of time and labor Access to private land is a real interesting conundrum. When I was a kid, it wasn't hard to get access to somebody's property to go squirrel hunting or deer hunting or picking mushrooms or whatever. It just wasn't something that was difficult to do. Exchanging, volunteering to help out with these projects and I'm volunteering to let them have access to the farm for that particular thing. And we can have these kind of exchanges for all kinds of things. It's just that in the past decade or two, it's become more and more difficult to get onto private land. And so the land needs us and the land owner needs help. And so this opportunity to involve people with the conservation of the property only makes sense. And it's been particularly gratifying when people tell me that they enjoy coming and helping with projects as much and in some cases even more than the actual hunting. There's a real sense of community that develops, even in a weekend of people being here. Something about that old farmhouse, or something about being out, watching a fire together, limbing trees together, doing other things that are caring for the land, that you're doing it as a group. It's a shared experience. I think anyone who comes here for a weekend and is a part of this, with whatever the group of people is, it's usually there's, there's usually a new person or two every time we have some event going on. Everybody leaves friends. <laughs> That's the stuff. That's the stuff of community. Community builds everything. Cooperation, conservation, all of that. And so one of the great things about this is I'm able to work with these access seekers in a cooperative way on conservation and it's wonderful when they say to me, the hunting is great fun 
and I really enjoy the hunting. But when I've had people say my favorite part of this is coming and working on the land and learning more about it and knowing that I'm contributing to the conservation of this property and the habitat for the animals that we're hunting and the ecosystem of all of the other members of this biotic community. It's been really gratifying sharing this property in that way with people and coming to the realization that they Yes, want to come here and pick mushrooms and dig ramps and hunt turkeys and hunt deer, but they also want to be involved with the conservation of the property, with the work that it takes to do. Some of the work that folks do with me is simple things like helping me pick up around the, pro the, the property, uh, limbs that came down in storm damage. I've had people come in and shovel manure in the barn or out of the barn. Um, we've done some carpentry work. We've done some masonry work. There's just all kinds of things that people can do to contribute to a community of people who are sharing a property. One thing that I figured out over time is being the steward of a property really does mean that it's not ours, it's just our turn. This is my turn on this property. And that's how sharing the land was started.